Hi, my name is Dave. Today I'm speaking with a New Jersey resident, Wanda Davis, who is drowning in deep sorrow and pain. Wanda's sister, an American homeowner who worked for the city of Philadelphia, left for Jamaica several weeks ago to spend Christmas with a Jamaican man she married. But instead of coming back glowing with happiness and a tropical suntan, her sister was handed over to the family last week in a casket, stone cold dead. Wanda, my profound condolences to you. Tell us what happened. Thank you, Dave, for allowing me to tell my sister's story. And yes, my sister did go to Jamaica to actually celebrate the holidays and her birthday with her husband, who is 30 years younger than her. So we actually met uh, the gentleman in question who actually, while we were vacationing at a five-star hotel in Jamaica about seven years ago. And um, unbeknownst to me um, that they had gotten married, um, I guess six years ago now, um, she kept going to Jamaica by herself and just would tell her family, I'm in Jamaica, I'm fine. And, you know, we had a lot of questions, but she seemed to be happy. So, and she's grown. So, you know, I'm the oldest of three siblings and um, I'm the protective sister. I, I tried to ask questions and she said, I'm happy. Don't ask me any questions. So we kind of went along, the family went along with that. Um, so in, uh, de on December 3rd, it was my sister's 69th birthday. Um, I text her and I said, how was your birthday? She said, uh, I, I'm having a wonderful time. And then the next word I heard was from the person that said he was her husband um, and said that he had to take her to the hospital, that she was sick. So I feel as though that was around the middle of December. I feel as though that uh, the family has been put through Chinese torture from that time until uh, January 10th when we got word from this guy that my sister had passed away. Um, so we had no contact with her. He said that he had her telephone, her cell phone rather, and that um, he all the information that was given to us was given via him um, as to what the doctors were saying and everything. And um, because he said he was her husband, you know, uh, I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it was just some things that weren't adding up. So um, we tried to call the hospital to find out her condition. And of course, we didn't know to ask for what his last name was. We were asking for what her name was that we knew that she used here in the States. So um, they wouldn't give us any information about her condition or anything. And as I said, January 10th, we were contacted by him saying that my sister had passed away. So we are very, very distraught because uh, we just received her body back last week. And it has been a charade of um, lies from this gentleman, uh, we said we needed to access. He had everything. He had her keys, her, all of her ID and everything. We needed to get access to her house because unfortunately we had lost our mom in April and we wanted to have my sister's body buried with my mother. So we had to get into her house to get um, access to papers in order to do that. And this gentleman said that he was trying to get an emergency visa to come to the States. Well, I do know for a fact that from 2013, my sister had been trying to get him a visa to come here. And for some reason, uh, he, she kept saying that he was denied. He was denied. He was denied. And now all of a sudden you can get an emergency visa to come to the States now that my sister is dead. So um, he said that he wanted to come here and let us into the house. Let us, 
her 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 family into her house to get the necessary papers that we needed to get her shipped back here and buried with my mom because he wanted to protect his interests in the property. So he did get his emergency visa, came back here on the day that her body was shipped. Like I said, she died January the 10th. We just got her body back last week, which was uh, February, February 5th. And um, still we had no death certificate, uh, no cause of death or anything. I also wrote a letter to the consulate and I said, you know, we're trying to get my my sister's body shipped back here. We need the um, death certificate and information on that. They wrote me back and said that the gentleman had my sister's death certificate. So we should seek him out. To this day, we're still waiting to get that copy of that death certificate. My thing is that the day that my sister's body arrived here, he and someone that he said was his sister, went to my sister's house, had the locks changed and um, entered the house and, and, and there they are. So we don't have any information as to what is going on. So now my sister's uh, body is with a funeral director here in, in uh, it's in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, her body is there with that funeral director and he has been instructed by this person that says he's her husband not to give the family any information on the cause of my sister's death or any information. I don't know what, uh, what about what? What is he trying to hide? So anyway, um, that's where we are with that. We're very distraught. We... Um, it's just very hard to, to know that my sister's body has still not been buried or whatever because this they're, they're withholding information from us. And all they seem to be interested in is the property and claiming this asset of her home in Philadelphia. What about her bank accounts? Okay, um, we did find out that one of her bank accounts had been um, wiped out. It was a deficit amount in her bank account. Um, really, because we have no death certificate, we are we're at this 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 gentleman's mercy. Because as her husband, he's he has claim to everything. So we can't we can only get limited information. But we did find out that one of her bank accounts had been wiped out. No, clearly you're suspicious. Have law enforcement agencies been involved in this case? Yes, they have. So um, we, the family, have been in contact with her neighbors. And the day that they arrived, um, they told us that there were people that got out of a, a taxi or an Uber or whatever and were circling her house and taking pictures and having a snowball fight like it was a big party. So I called the police. Yes, I did. I called the police and I said, you know, my sister is deceased. Who are these people here? And uh, so then I did talk to the police sergeant and he told me that the gentleman said that he was my sister's husband and that the lady, whoever she is, I don't know whether he's she's her, his sister or his significant other, his his lady friend, because I do know that he has two two children. Um that she said she was my sister's caregiver and i don't i don't understand that statement either but anyway so they got access to the house apparently after the police left that's when they changed the locks on the house got a locksmith to come in and change the locks on the house so the thing is and what's so hurtful that my sister worked for the city of philadelphia for years worked hard for that property and if my sister had any faults, her only faults were that she was a very caring, loving, compassionate person, and she would give anybody the shirt off of her back. Unfortunately, she fell in love with this gentleman, and truthfully, I feel as though that they swindled, they they took advantage of her, and um, you know, now that she is deceased, they come here 
and just want to take claim to the property and not dealing with the thing at, on hand, which is um, our family want her to be buried with my mother. Are there, is there any insurance involved? I don't know because, again, we don't have the death certificate. So we we cannot, We he has access to everything. He has all of her information. I really believe that, you know, it could even be some identity theft going on here. I, I really do believe that because it's too many question marks and it seems to be too regimented the way they just came here, you know, took over the house and are interested in the house only and not, you know, trying to work with the family to give us some closure on my sister's death. No, as you get to this juncture, um, is there any advice that you would want to leave with people who are developing overseas international relationships? Yes, I, Dave, I can truly say that our family, we've traveled to Jamaica, I think since in the 90s, like 1999, and we had a love for Jamaica, a love for the Jamaican people. And this has really put a bad taste in my mouth as far as, you know, people taking advantage of people that are, we're considered, I guess, wealthy there and um, taking advantage. I, I was able to find some documents uh, that my sister was lending the family money, doing renovations on their home in Jamaica. Um, which I don't have a problem with that, but it's just that, you know, I really feel as though that she was taken advantage of. And now we just have, uh, her, her memory has been tarnished. So I would make people be aware that things like this are happening. You're going to five-star hotels thinking that you're going to be embraced and, uh, by the people and then you're taken advantage of because you're you're a kind person. Wanda, thank you so very much for sharing your story. And I hope for the best outcome of the situation. I know as a Jamaican myself, Jamaicans are sensitive to being accused. Do you think you're standing on really good ground to assume that there is foul play i do i do think that i'm standing on firm ground i am a believer and in the pit of my stomach like i said my sister was my was the middle child i have a younger brother and i'm the oldest in the pit of my stomach um from the very start when i saw her interest in this person 30 years her her junior you know, I said to myself, what what interest is it there for him as a young man? And um, truthfully, I, I just feel as though that something may have happened. You know, maybe he, she was of no further interest to them uh, because of her age and that, you know, they're just going to move on because the, the way they came over here and just took took advantage and took advantage of her kindness as far as helping their family, you know, to, to do things there to the home there. Uh, I, I just, yes, I, I feel that I have documentation. I have some documentation, just the fact of the way they handled the whole situation coming over here, taking claim to her house and the fact that her body is still at the funeral director. I heard a story that the husband is also claiming some of your mother's assets? Yes. Um, actually, when um, he called, he told me that his wife told him everything. He knows everything about everything, which, you know, I was like, so what does that mean? He knows about my mom just passing and my sister handled the affairs for my mom's house, property. And um, so he, he told me he knows everything about everything. So... He, he indicated that, you know, there might be an interest in that as well. And the way he came, came in here, like uh, blockbusters, you know, and just taking control over everything. And we're at his beck and call. 
and we have no rights because he is her husband, even with the funeral director. We, he won't do anything without the husband's approval. So if you were so concerned about the well-being of my sister, why is her body, she died on January the 10th, why is her body still not buried with my mom? Which you told me that you knew that she would want to be buried with our mother, and he has done nothing to implement that. Wanda, I hope for you the best possible outcome. Again, my condolences. And thank you very much for sharing your story. You're welcome, Dave.